There has been fresh violence in Manipur in the last 24 hours, even as Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is visiting the state. I'm Barkhadat Yo with the Mojo story. Our focus continues to be on the troubled northeastern state of India, which has seen clashes between two communities, the Metis and the Kukis, amid deferring competitive political slogans. The Kuki community wants a separate administration. The Métis are lashing out at members of the Kuki community and calling them militants. In the midst of all this, there has been fresh violence. This even as Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is in the state and is alleging that he is not being allowed free access to meet with the people there. The politics aside, the real concern for us as Indians is the continued civil strife. The army has had to face repeated clashes with women-led mobs. In one instance, the army was compelled to release 12 militants after facing off with a 1,500-strong mob that was led by women. The army issued a rare statement alleging that women, in certain instances, were protecting writers. But it also underlined, as you can see in this video, that being humane is not a sign of weakness. This is a state where there is now urgent need to restore peace and amity, but it is also a state which has an open border with Myanmar and there is a national security dimension to what is happening as well. As the army on the ground appeals for peace, on the program today, we have a very special newsmaker joining us, Lieutenant General Consul Himalaya Singh. He is, in fact, the first three-star officer uh, from his region, the first officer of his rank, in fact, from the entire Northeast, a Kargil war hero, someone who has served at Siachen, and of course, uh, somebody who is also a member of the government panel on the Naga Peace Talks. It is an honor, sir, to have your time and your wisdom uh, today on the program. Let me start by asking you, as someone from Manipur, how how concerned are you at what you're seeing, a continued sort of cycle of violence, fresh violence as well, in the last 24 hours, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Uh, thank you, can you hear very me? much. Yes, uh, go ahead, sir. Yes. I can hear you, but I can't see you. We can hear you and I see you, sir. I can hear you, but uh, I think uh, the link is breaking. We can hear you fine, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, firstly, thank you very much, um, Barkhadat, for your um, uh, attention to Manipur and for calling me to discuss the issues. Uh, first, I would like to uh, say that I was only a commanding officer of 1,000 troops, and 1,000 troops, they were the heroes. And uh, another point uh, I would like to correct is that uh, the class is not between two communities. It is between the elements, I mean, a major portion of uh, two, uh, two communities where due to fear and due to uncertainty of their respective futures, they have resorted to this violence. And also women-led mob, maybe a little strong word to uh, say that because uh, it's a, there is a story behind this. And uh, uh, now coming to your question about um, uh, my uh, impression of the whole thing, you are aware about what is happening here. The entire nation is aware about what is happening here. It is extremely unfortunate. And uh, uh, what I would like to say here, I will say that what is not here. First, I would like to clarify that it's not a class between Hindus and Christians. It is not a class between tribals and non-tribals. It is a class between elements of two communities who have gone uh, a little, uh, I mean, uh, more violent than what normally it is in a tribal society. Our society is full of, um, you know, violence since the time of last 500 years, at least I can, you know, recorded history of over 2000 years, full of violence between communities, between tribal groups, between ethnic groups, and what have you. So 
We have had such violence in 1992, 93 between Kukis and Nagas, between Kukis and Paites. Paite is another Jo group, Chin Jo group in 1997. So the, the uh, such incidences, they are not new. But coming to this particular case, I am of the opinion, certainty of respective uh, communities and which was exploited by the elements, the militant elements on both the sites. So uh, we can discuss further. So, uh, yes. Uh, uh, no, thank you, sir. I think that's a very important point that you make. In fact, uh, Manipur has had, uh, I think, 36 communities. Can you hear me, sir? Manipur has had 36 communities that have lived uh, in Amity. Let me ask you this. For the army, what is the challenge? The army recently said it was compelled to release 12 militants because it wanted to, in the interests of larger peace. As an army officer, as a, as a general, what do you think is the biggest challenge for the army on the ground in Manipur right now? The challenge for army and other security forces are many, one of which you have just mentioned. In this particular militants or uh, so-called militants you have mentioned, I would like to say that uh, the women, uh, we're not, you're calling them mob will be a little too much, uh, but it was, if you look at the history of the women folk in the, in the state of Manipur, the male folk used to be forever in, you know, war with, particularly with the Burmese. The women folk were the protectors of the society of Manipur. And this is in the blood of the Manipuri women. And this is what was displayed there. So I, um, uh, as a military commander, I, I certainly uh, would have liked to, uh, you know, keep those people, particularly those involved in the, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Dogra ambush of 2015. I do not know the circumstances, how they were released, but I can tell you that it was the decision was taken under extremely uh, difficult conditions and it was taken uh, with the clearance, I believe, from uh, people higher than those who were on the ground. If you were an army officer on the ground, faced with that choice, do I release militants in the interest of larger peace, what would you have done? I think my, um, you know, uh, when I was a corps commander in Jammu and Kashmir, I used to uh, tell my boys that um, a militant escaping, one militant escaping is better than, you know, three or four uh, uh, innocent casualties being caused. The militant will get them sometime later. In a, you know, it won't take time. But the innocent people should not be harmed. So in this particular case, as a young officer or a commanding officer, it would have been, I would have taken all measures to make sure that any uh, positively identified militant group with weapons are kept in my custody. Yes, that's such an important point that you've said, uh, you know, your lesson from Kashmir that one militant getting out can be caught later. But that is not the priority. The priority is to avoid any civilian casualties. And that is what the, uh, the army did uh, when faced this, with this situation. Now, talk a little bit more about the women that you see at the forefront of these, uh, these protests. You say calling them a mob is, is too much. Or using the word mob is wrong. Tell our audience a little bit more about the women of Manipur and, and why the women in so many ways are both the victims of what is happening, the worst victims, but also at the front line of the protests.
Barkha, just one sec. Uh, can I, shall I come in my um, iPhone? Because, you know, your voice is breaking. Can I come on your okay, uh, on the iPhone? Okay, we can, we can try, try that. Try? Yeah. Uh, if, why don't you rejoin? And in the meantime, let us also... I think because uh, okay, your sure, voice sir. is breaking. This one. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. We'll do that. We'll do that. And uh, in the meantime, we will play out for you uh, the politics. The politics is also dominating the headlines. Rahul Gandhi is there in uh, the state at the moment. And the Congress is alleging that he has been uh, blocked um, from free access and free movement. We've seen dramatic visuals uh, come out of the state uh, where uh, Mr. Gandhi uh, alleges that that he's not being allowed to freely meet people. The security personnel in the administration says this is for his own safety and there are security concerns uh, which have to mean a restricted movement. Listen in to what the Congress is saying on Manipur and Rahul Gandhi's visit. And I have to tell you some of आज दो महीने हो गए मणिपुर में प्रधानमंत्री के मुंह से हिंसा की भर्सना और शांति की अपील नहीं निकली यह भी सच है कि अमित शाह वहां दौरे पर गए और जब वो वापस आए तो हिंसा और बढ़ी और लोगों की मौतें हुई तो क्या प्लान क्या है एक ऑल पार्टी मीटिंग बुलाई जाती है जिसमें प्रधानमंत्री ही नहीं है उस मीटिंग में जो एकमात्र रिप्रेजेंटेटिव मणिपुर के हमारे पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री थे उनको कुल गिनकर 3 मिनट बोलने दिया जाता है आपका प्लान क्या है मणिपुर में शांति बहाल करने के लिए मीडिया को मैनेज करके आप मणिपुर की आग और हिंसा को शांत नहीं कर सकते हैं मणिपुर के लोगों से बात कीजिए उनका विश्वास जीतिए और जो ये कोशिश कर रहा है उस कोशिश को और आगे बढ़ाइए और मैं ये इसलिए कहना चाहती हूं क्योंकि कांग्रेस हर बार जब इस देश पर संकट आया है जब इस देश पर दिक्कतें आई है तो खड़ी हुई है चाहे वो महात्मा गांधी हो जो नुआखली पहुंच गए थे अपनी जान की बाजी लगाकर और हिंसा को शांत करके अमन चैन बहाल कर कर ही उन्होंने बात मानी थी या चाहे वो नेहरू हो जिन्होंने यही दिल्ली में समस्या हुई और वो खुद मैदान में उतर गए या इंदिरा जी हो जो बेलछी खुद पहुंच गए और या आज राहुल जी हो जो खुद पहुंच गए हैं और चाहते हैं कि यह हिंसा रुक जाए क्योंकि हिंसा कि लेश मात्र एक सभ्य समाज में जगह नहीं है लेकिन उनको रोका जा रहा है रोकना हिंसा को है बचाना लोगों को है रोका राहुल गांधी को जा रहा है और ये पहला वाक्य नहीं है जब हाथरस जा रहे थे तब आपने रोका था जब लखीमपुर जा रहे थे तब आपने रोका था हर बार अगर राहुल गांधी जी लोगों के साथ खड़े होने के लिए जाते हैं तो आप रोकते हैं लेकिन इतिहास भी साक्षी है कि वो जहां जाने के लिए निकलते हैं अंतवा वहां पहुंचते जरूर है All right, uh, General, uh, General Himalaya uh, Singh, I hope you can hear me better now. Uh, I was asking you to talk a little bit about the role of the women of Manipur. You touched upon it. They've become now in the center stage, as it were, of the debate. Talk a little bit about the women of Manipur, sir, if you can hear me. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will take a break. Uh, we'll take a break because General Singh, remember the internet is a bit uh, sort of uh, interrupted uh, in Manipur. And so there's no surprise, the General can't hear me. And we'll reconnect and uh, we will pick up this conversation and we'll bring you the full interview once we have it. General Singh, I'm taking a last attempt. Are you? No, I, I don't think. Are you able to hear me, sir? Are you able to hear me, sir? Okay, no problem. We will take a break. We'll be back with the full interview, the full conversation with Lieutenant General Himalaya Singh uh, once we have uh, that connection sorted out. So thank you for your patience and do look out for that full conversation coming soon to the Mojo Store. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.